Now we can begin. All right, so the resistivity increases linear, linearly from left to right. And they give us the function of the electric uh, current I is constant. Obtain the expression for the electric field as a function of distance. And this goes back to what I always think of as the Joe equation. So the current density is the conductivity times the electric field. This is going to be our avenue into this problem. And this is conductivity. And not a few of other things that we use sigma for. I know that the the current density is equal to oh, the not a vector. The IDA. And so we have a relationship here now that tells us that the current is constant and that the uh, cross-sectional area is constant. Uh, so this just becomes, we have I over A is equal to sigma epsilon naught. We're trying to find, wow. Center myself. Sigma times E, and it's not epsilon, that is an E. Or electric field. So therefore E is equal to I over sigma A. Now the conductivity, it comes down to the relationship between the conductivity and resistivity because they tell us the resistivity in the problem and it relies on this idea that the conductivity is just the reciprocal of the resistivity. And so this becomes the resistivity I times A. And then it's just a matter of the equation that they gave us. For resistivity, it's rho sub naught plus alpha x times I over A. I is constant, A is constant, rho sub naught, and alpha are constant. We have only one variable here, and that's x. And so if we plot it, it's just a linear, it's a linear relationship. We can put it into slope intercept form. My electric field is equal to I alpha over A times x plus I rho sub naught over A. There's my intercept, and there's my slope. Thank you. Yep. It kind of, in the solution, just kind of pieced it all together in one thing, so I didn't really understand what it came from. Okay, That's but you good now? Yes. All right, and what was the other one that you said? 73. 73. That's the ratio. Okay. Silver to gold. All right. So we are talking about, they give us the resistivities there. So probably we're dealing with something with resistance. Especially since I believe they told us that resistance was the same. Uh, Cross-sectional area and the resistance are the same. Well, what's the formula for resistance? Uh, rho times point over cross-sectional area. All right. So we are looking at the ratio of cross-sectional areas. Ratio of cross-sectional areas. <laughs> and so from this, I know that the area is equal to rho L over R. So cross-sectional area of silver over the cross-sectional area of gold is equal to rho silver L silver over R silver divided by rho gold L gold over R gold. There are shorter ways of doing this, but it's one fraction divided by another, so this becomes rho silver length silver. R gold over 
rose gold, L gold, or silver, just dividing by a fraction, same as multiplying by the reciprocal. And now we get rid of the things that are the same. In this problem, they tell us that the equal length and equal amount of resistance. Those cancel, those cancel. And so we end up with the ratio of the cross-sectional areas is the same as the ratio of the resistivities. And at that point, plug and chuck. Is that sufficient? Okay. Other questions? What about AD2? Oh, there's the wedge problem. I didn't quite understand how they set up the, the integral, and then I didn't know how to solve the integral once it was set up. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to do it slightly differently than they did it. Uh, so there's a less complex formula, uh, at least less complex looking formula in the end. All right, so we have the wedge here. That's radius, I think, R1. Yep, and R2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a coordinate system. I'm going to basically treat this as, well, we'll use a little bit of algebra here. So I'm going to set up a coordinate system so that my origin is from that corner. This line right here, that distance would be R1. And that's my x-axis going off this way. I know that the resistance is equal to, let's make sure I'm going about this the right way, yep, is rho L, oops, if I put the rho in, over A. And But we're dealing with a changing resistance as we go. So that's the, I think the current is constant? Yeah. Okay. So my cross-sectional area, so I'm at some point x here, my cross-sectional area here is r. dr is equal to rho dx over the value of a at that point. a is not a differential because that's a cross-sectional area. It's definitely not infinitesimally small. My area at any particular spot is rho dx over pi little r squared, where little r is just that distance. Well, the reason why I've set up my coordinate system that way is I basically have a line there. My bottom is just a line. So y equals slope x plus d form. Let's, let's do it. So I know that my, by dealing with x in this direction, dealing with some sort of radial vector in that direction. But the, court, the formula for this line here is y is equal to, well, my slope is just rise over run. Well, my rise is that distance. So that's r1 minus r2 and my run is L, which is the length of it. My intercept is zero because I set it up so that. So my value of R here in terms of X is just the difference between R1 and whatever value that is, which is the position of, well, I'm on the line right there. So R, little r there, is equal to r1 minus r1 over r2, r1 minus r2, l, it's a lot of my x there, times x. And so they have that in there, but if we take the derivative here, because I have a dx and I have an r, these are both things that can change. So dr, 
is equal to, well, R1 is a constant. And this just becomes negative R1 minus R2 over L dx. Therefore, dx is equal to negative L, actually, let's get rid of the negative sign here, is L over R2 minus R1 dr. And I, the negative sign basically flipped my difference there. So now I can find the resistance. It's equal to the integral of, well, rho is constant, pi is constant. I have an r squared dr minus L over r2 minus r1, which is constant. Uh, so I end up with rho L over pi r2 minus r1 times the integral from r1 to r2 of this, which is just negative 1 over r from r1 to r2. So we're left with rho L over pi r2 minus r1 times negative 1 over r2 plus 1 over r1. Uh, a little bit of algebra. I forgot what our end goal was at this point. To, oh, what is the resistance of the tapered wire? Uh, this, get a common denominator, so you end up with R2 minus R1 on top, so this becomes rho L over pi R2 minus R1 times uh, negative R1 plus R2 over R1, R2. So those cancel now, and I'm left with just rho L over pi R1, R2. Other questions about either of these or uh, other problems? Can I ask a question about the master square? Uh, let's, why don't we, unless you think it helps with the homework quiz, I would say let's wait till after the homework quiz. the flash quiz. What is a circuit symbol for? So, um, what's the deal with the unit for conductivity? It's sigma equals o one over ohm meter or reciprocal of ohm meters. But then on the second one, it says m h o over m. All right. So, the unit of resistivity is the ohm meter. Not a dash for dark. And conductivity 
is the reciprocal of that, of rho. So the unit that is harmful to notation is let's stick the brackets around it, not like you use the equal sign. So the units of conductivity would be one over ohm meters. One over ohm is the, that's the name of the unit. And the symbol for the unit, which apparently I could not write, was that. That's the symbol for the, I always pronounce it Maho, but I never actually heard it pronounced. And that's a real thing? That is a real thing. It is a great Scrabble word. No one expects it. So it doesn't really have a name. Well, I mean, that is the name right there. It's Maho. <laughs> so someone just it's flipped the word backwards and put the symbol upside down and call that. Yep. So this, the units of conductivity would be the low per meter. Uh, the other unit that we will we haven't gotten into yet, but there's a unit for a unit for inductance is the Henry. And their one over a Henry is the just Henry written backwards. Uh, flipping the H upside down doesn't quite do much, so. I, that's another word I've never heard pronounced, but it is a legitimate word. I've used it once in a word game. <laughs>